Welcome to the channel, Manny. Be investing friends, where we invest, we talk about cryptocurrency, talk about NFTs, CNFTs, Cardano blockchain in general. In this video, last night, the CEO and co-founder of Coinbase dropped some knowledge on us, a lot of transparency, which is something that the cryptocurrency community has grown to appreciate and also grown to expect from actors in this space. Mainstream centralized exchange, probably one of the most popular ones in America anyways, Coinbase, dropped some information here. Number one, some really sketchy behavior coming out of the SEC recently. Story time. Uh-oh. Tweet two. Millions of crypto holders have been earning yields on their assets over the last few years. It makes sense if you want to lend out your funds, you can earn a return. Everyone seems happy. A bunch of great companies in crypto have been offering versions of this for years. Coinbase came out recently and said we would be launching our own version. Uh, so what he means by that is uh, just like lending. There's a, pretty much every exchange that I am involved in offers some type of lending whether it be through peer-to-peer uh, -peer or maybe like providing liquidity, um, yield farming, things like that. Um, I guess I can do videos on those in the future if you're interested, but we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. It basically allows you to take what you have purchased and have been sitting on. You, you can leverage that. You can lend it out for rewards and the... The central exchange, Coinbase, is looking at offering those newly popular services that a lot of the blockchains uh, offer themselves. They'll basically play a middleman for a person that doesn't really understand how to move tokens around different wallets and find stake pools and et cetera, et cetera, or use um, like Orion Terminal, connecting a MetaMask wallet, transferring funds. Like that stuff is like... It, it's it's a lot to take on, especially as a, a normal person that just wants to get exposure to cryptocurrency. They will allow an easy way for that to happen. And I think that is what makes the SEC really sour on it, regardless of uh, what their jurisdiction is. Um, five. Well, did we skip this one? Yeah, we're, we're planning on going live in a few weeks. So we reached out to the SEC to give them a friendly heads up and a briefing. I think that is very responsible because that's what these companies are. They are very responsible. You have to be. You have to be extremely responsible and transparent when dealing with a new technology that plays in uh, like a market, like a like a stock market. And it's super volatile. So prices are going up and they're going down rapidly in, in massive swings, um, in small swings a lot. But... When you are involved in choppy seas, it is best for the captain to communicate with the people on the boat. And that's what they do. They reached out to the SEC, say, hey, this is something that everybody's doing. We're looking at doing our version of it. This is what's going on. They responded by telling us this Lynn feature is a security. Okay. Seems strange. How can lending be a security? So we asked the SEC to help us understand and share their view. We always make an effort to work proactively with regulators and keep an open mind. They refused to tell us why they think it's a security and instead subpoenaed a bunch of records from us. We comply, demand testimony from our employees. We comply and then tell us they will be suing us if we proceed to launch with zero explanation as to why. And I think we know why. Number seven, look, we're committed to following the law. Sometimes the law is unclear. So if the SEC wants to publish guidance, we are also happy to follow that. It's nice if you actually enforce it evenly across the industry equally, by the way. Eight, but in this case, they are refusing to offer any opinion in writing to the industry on what should be allowed and why. And instead of engaging in intimidation tactics behind closed doors, whatever their theory is, it feels like a reach, land grab versus other regulators. Meanwhile, 
plenty of other crypto companies continue to offer a Lin feature, but Coinbase is somehow not allowed to. Number 10, Gensler. Gensler's the guy that uh, became popular uh, like probably like 2017 when the, when the crypto markets really took off. He ended up teaching a course at uh, Harvard, I believe, on blockchain technology, and people just saw him as like, Oh, this guy's really cool. He seems like a really nice guy. He's got a smile on his face. He's smart. He's got a lot of um, traditional education around finance, and he seems to be a good actor as far as the side of regulators uh, goes. But I think we're finding out that that's just not true because, I mean, try not to slip my personal beliefs and opinions into this channel, but I just, when it comes to the federal government, Mm, I don't know. I think I would rather trust a rattlesnake, honestly, as we're finding out together. 11. If you don't want this activity, then simply publish your position in writing and enforce it evenly across the industry. Oh, the SEC's goal is to protect investors and create fair markets. So who are they protecting here? And where's the harm? People seem pretty happy to be earning yields on these various products across lots of other crypto companies. So I think that you kind of answered your question there. Why? Well, the, the point or the goal of the SEC is to protect investors from the evildoers. But who's protecting the people from the SEC? I think uh, that was a question Batman might have asked. So I don't know. I, I, well, I do know. They don't want myself or you listening right now, watching this video, to make money. They don't want you to make passive income. They don't want a person that would spend 30, 40 years of their life working an entry-level position at McDonald's, slaving away, paying the taxes, and dying with nothing. That's what they want. They want human beings, the average American, to be a battery. They run you until you die. They take you out, throw you in the garbage can, and they take your kid. They pop them in your place. That's what the federal government wants for you. That's what they want for me. And if you figure out a way to make your money work for you, or you figure out a way through automation, artificial intelligence, a way to generate revenue for yourself while you sleep or work another job or travel, they want you gone. That's just the way it works. That's the way they are. They are not here to protect you. They're not here to protect me. They're here to protect them. They're here to take our money. They're all in your affairs. You make a good decision and you come up on some money. They want it. They want a portion. You pay your fair share. What's fair about somebody that had nothing to do with anything going on in my head? Taking 10, 20% for themselves. When they make a good decision and make money, they don't give me any. They barely even take care of the people. They barely take care of my brothers and sisters. You, they don't take care of us. We take care of us. That's the big problem. 13, shutting these down would arguably be harming consumers more than protecting them. And by preventing Coinbase from launching the same thing that other companies already have live, they're creating an unfair market regulating big boys in America is what they're doing. In May of this year, I traveled to D.C. to meet with every regulator and branch of government I could. 15. The SEC was the only regulator that refused to meet with me, saying we're not meeting with any crypto companies. This was right after we became the first crypto company to go public in the U.S. <sighs> Looks like that election, man. That election... We thought it was about one thing. It was really about another. They sold us on the idea that our president wasn't presidential enough. 
he was tweeting mean things to people. So we went with the nice guy that hugged babies and kissed kids on the forehead and looked sad. But when he was elected, looks like he unleashed a bag of snakes in the financial sector. Boy, we got a lesson to learn here. 16, Gensler had been confirmed just a month prior. So I brushed it off as an SEC is still getting its feet under it. Now I'm not so sure. We've always tried to be good actors in this space. Leaning in the sensible regulation, even when it is difficult or expensive, we try to think about what products we would want for ourselves and what risk we would want our families to be aware of before launching products. And I think Coinbase does an excellent job of educating. Uh, we will keep following this approach as they should. Yet here, we're being threatened with legal action before a single bit of actual guidance has been given to the industry on these products. If we end up going to court, we may finally get the regulatory clarity the SEC refuses to provide, but regulation by litigation should be the last resort for the SEC, not the first. Yeah, I agree. And as much as I don't like XRP's bro investors, I feel like they're being attacked, even though they did do some shady stuff. I want them to win. I want them to actually get clarity for the industry because this, yeah, if we feel like getting you, yeah, we will. If, yeah, if we don't, it's almost, it works almost just like the gun industry. It's like kind of what the ATF does, but the ATF, at least they publish records on what they believe. They publish documents. You can read what their opinions are on things. And the SEC is just like, don't do it or we're going to sue you. And it's like, well, why don't worry about it? Okay. That seems really fair. That seems like that seems like a process that our federal government is uh you know is running on. That's just it's just silly. It doesn't make any sense. Looks like Mark Cuban chimed in here. Brian, this is the regulatory via, regulation via litigation. They aren't capable of working through this themselves and are afraid of making mistakes in doing so. They, they leave it to the lawyers, just the people you don't want impacting the new technologies. I agree with that. You have to go on the offensive. Man, I really hope these guys come together. Mark Cuban, Brian Armstrong, Coinbase, you know, Vitalik, especially um, Cardano, the number three blockchain, Charles Hoskinson, like they're Americans. They have American based crypto companies. Well, he has American he has American employees here. I don't think his his company is global for that very reason. But it's gonna there this is this isn't gonna stop. This is just the beginning. We're in year one of the new president's uh term where the regime this is year one. We've got a long ways to go, people. I hope you learn from our mistakes that we've made in the past and we look and seek and hold our politicians accountable at the local level, all the way up to the Fed, because it starts in your backyard. If you're not holding your elected officials to standard, talking about crypto, talking about emerging technologies, talking about uh, digital finance, financial automations, things of that nature, how they can benefit not only the people, but the city as well. We need to be educating children on this stuff. We need to be setting up labs so that kids get exposure. We need to be doing all of that. There are some cities in this country that are doing that. They're setting up uh, proof of work, proof of stake. They're actually mining, you know, Dogecoin in some of these schools, these more advanced Texas schools. They're doing this. This is really sad. It's really scary. Um, I hope things get sorted out and I support Coinbase. I hope you do too. Hit the, hit, hit the heart and definitely hit that retweet on it. Just to get exposure to what's going on and how this this administration is handling an emerging technology that people clearly like and love and are clearly making life changing and wife changing decisions. Thank you for checking out the video. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Manny B Gaming, and hit that subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.